In this video, we're using Python to do capacity planning. And if you are following along with us in our Python workbooks, please go to drstephpowers.github.io slash management in Python. That's mgmt in Python. And to access the workbook, we're going to go down here where it says capacity planning. So click on that uh, workbook. It takes you into GitHub and you will open in Google Collab. So just click on that button on the top. In order to run the code, you will need to be signed into a Google account. In order to edit the code, you need to copy it to your own Google Drive. So it's your copy to do with as you wish. Uh, so make sure you do that. I'm just going to switch over to a version where I am already logged in. There we go. And we are going to do some capacity planning. So let me just pull up some slides so we can talk a little bit about capacity planning. So capacity planning is about bridging the gap between the amount you are actually able to make in terms of goods or services and what you forecast you need to make or what, how many services you need to provide. So the steps for capacity planning are to forecast your demand. And typically you're doing that for one to five years or longer. And that really is going to depend. I'll just go back if I can to the slide somewhere we have here. <laughs> you can, of course, check out the other videos to see uh, the, the rest of these slides. Uh, but when we're looking at capacity planning, if we're looking at capacity planning for staffing or for ordering of materials, then we may only need to forecast up to 12 weeks. If we are looking at hiring and how many people we need to have on staff, not just who's working this week, or we are looking at our production process, we might be looking at uh, 12 weeks or two years in terms of our forecast. If we're making strategic decisions, looking at um, our plant size, that so we're building our location, our infrastructure, then it might be much longer, two to five years. Of course, if you're building like a polyethylene plant, you're looking at 50 years. If you're looking at municipal planning and you're looking at building infrastructure, uh, then 50, 75 years, depending on how hard it is to change those decisions uh, when you build some of that infrastructure, some of the piping, underground uh, tanks, those types of things, right? So we need to first figure out how far into the future we need to forecast. So sorry, I'm just going to scroll back to that slide we were on. So forecast our demand, maybe one to five years or maybe more. Then we need to calculate the capacity requirements to meet those forecasts. We need to measure the current capacity and we need to see what kind of gap we have. So let's consider, and there is another video where you can do the same example in Excel, but we're going to do this right now in Python. So here we have uh, over the years, maybe look at the last 10 years, here are the number of patients that we are treating. And as we look at this data, we're looking at, okay, here's how many patients need some kind of surgery. And we're looking at our capacity to provide surgical suites within, let's say, our hospital. So our first step here is to forecast demand for one to five years or more. And we have other videos where we show you how to do uh, um, forecasting, especially linear forecasting uh, in Python. We'll quickly do that again with this data set. So here's our data. We have 10 years of historical data and we have the number of patients that we are seeing. To do this in Python, we want to plot the data. So we need matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So we're just calling it PLT to make life simpler. We don't have to type out the whole thing every time. But we need to import that graphing package. We're going to do linear regression, do a line of best fit so we can forecast into the future. So we need to import linear regression from the sklearn.linear model package. And because that linear regression model requires us to manipulate the data a bit to format it the way that it wants, we need to import NumPy and we'll just call it NP to make life simpler. So we run that. This is to install our packages we need for what we're going to do. And then the next thing we need to do is dump in our data. So we have our years, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. You could use actual years. Uh, it just gives you a more complicated math formula because you're dealing with bigger numbers. Life can be simple if you just call it period one, two, three, four. And then we have our patients. So this data is just simply matching what we saw on the slide. In year one, we had 3,400 patients needing surgery. And all the way to year 10, we can see that it's going up uh, 6980. 
So we'll put that information in. Now let's plot that data. So we'll use plt.plot. Whatever you want on the horizontal axis goes first. So year is what goes on the horizontal. Patient is going to go on the vertical. We'll mark it with some dots. And we won't add a line here because we want our regression line to be what's added. All right, plt.xlabel labels the x-axis to say year, y-label is the number of patients, and to make things easier, we add a grid. So let's run that. So here we have our data, and we can see it looks like there is some kind of linear trend. We need to forecast forward into the future. So to forecast forward into the future, what we want to do is we want to find the line of best fit. Looks like a linear one will fit nicely. To do that, just like we did in our previous videos with our linear regression, we have to format the data for how the linear regression model likes it. So we're going to convert our data into an array. So we're using the NumPy package, that's the NP. We're going to convert our years into an array and we're going to reshape it. Okay, so whatever is on your horizontal axis gets reshaped. If you use that reshape, negative one, one. And then we need the other variable, what's on the vertical axis, also needs to be converted into an array. So we will do that. And then we can do our linear regression. So we'll just call our linear regression model model. And we're going to fit that linear regression. And we need to identify uh, whatever's on the x-axis goes first, so year, and then patient. So we run this. It fits a model. And we can actually get the formula that goes with that by pulling out the two pieces to a formula for a line. So when you're adding a line, there are two pieces. There is the slope of the line, and there's the point at which it crosses this y-axis when we have zero years. So the start of our count, what is the number of patients in that initial one? So in Python, that's model.coefish. That is going to be your slope. So when we run this, we're just simply calling from the model the coefficient. It's 454, four, so that's the slope of our formula. And we have model.intercept, so we're calling the intercept from the model, and we run that, and it's giving us the 2886.73. What that's telling us is that year zero, the number of patients was 2886.73. So to convert this into an actual formula, the number of patients is equal to 2886.73 plus 45405 times the number of years, which means that as we add year 11, year 12, year 13, we would simply multiply that period times 454 and add it to 2886 to get us those future values. Well, Python will do that for you. You don't have to do that by hand. Uh, but before we get to that, let's just check one more thing, which is how well does this model actually fit? So we run, or we have it pull from the model, the score. So this is R squared, the coefficient of determination, that says what percentage of the variability in the years explains the variation in the number of patients. And we can see our model fits quite well at a 90%. Okay, so we'll keep this model. And then the next thing we want to do is forecast forward, because really capacity planning is about forecasting forward and then turning that into what you actually need in terms of uh, materials or in terms of infrastructure, right? So here we're looking at number of surgical suites versus how many patients we need to be able to service. So let's call it X. You can call it whatever you want. It just can't be what we've already called things. So you can't use patient and you can't use year. Uh, so we need to create an array, and because this is on the horizontal axis, this is the years, the periods, it also is going to need to be reshaped. So think about it as creating that same format as your uh, years that you did before. So we use NumPy, we convert it into array. Here we're just going to convert into an array the numbers 11, 12, 13, 14, and we reshape it so that it fits into that linear regression model. The reason we're doing this is that our number of years goes to 10, so we want the next couple of years, so let's do year 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so dump that in, and then have it apply the model and predict the values. We'll call these values Y, and we'll use those X values to predict Y. So what we're doing is we're predicting patients, 
using our new years. And so we're just calling it X and Y because, you know, often this is Y equals some number plus a slope times X. Uh, but it just can't be the same names as patient and year because you already labeled those. So let's call Y's the output from our new periods 11, 12, 13, 14. So predict those values and it gives those these numbers right here. So what it's saying is that in those next couple periods, we're going to have 7881 in terms of number of patients, 8335, 8789, 9243. So we see that linear. Now we could plot this like we did in our linear regression video. We could add that line of best fit. We could add those forecasted values. But the point of this video is not linear regression or forecasting itself, but to use that information. So we'll skip that part for now. What we really need is these numbers because this is the number of patients that is being forecasted. So if we go back to our steps, forecast demand for one to five years, we just forecasted four years. Now we need to turn that into capacity requirements. So the next step in the process is to say, okay, great. If we have 9,000 patients that need to be seen, well, how much time does each patient typically use in the surgical suite? And how much time do we actually have available in each surgical suite? That's gonna tell us how much we need in terms of number of suites, number of operating tables. And then we can compare that to what we actually have. So maybe we currently have two surgical suites at our hospital, okay? The question becomes, is that good for the next four years? So let's find out. Let's make the assumption that the typical patient needs half an hour in a surgical suite, okay? Now you can have a more complicated model. We'll look at one in the next video where there's different amounts of time and quantities produced along that production process. Uh, but here, let's just do it very generic. Let's assume that each patient typically takes half an hour. Now, each surgical suite can be run for 40 hours a week, has to be down for maintenance, repair, cleaning. Uh, we want to make sure all the equipment's working, that it is sanitary. Uh, and let's say we can operate it 52 weeks a year. Okay, so how many surgical suites do we actually need? Well, we can then take these forecasted values we just came up with. That's how many patients we're going to need to service. So then let's convert this into how many surgical suites we're going to need. Well, however many patients we have, each one's gonna take half an hour. So if you multiply the number of patients time half an hour, you get the number of hours to service all those patients. And if these are the forecasts per year, so we need to service 7,881 patients, and each is gonna take a half an hour, so half that number is gonna be the number of hours we're gonna need. Now we can divide that by a surgical suite running 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. So 40 hours tells us how many hours per week. 40 times 52 gives us the total number of hours for the entire year. So we're taking the number of patient hours and dividing it by the number of hours available for one surgical suite. We can have this formula typed in here, y times 0.5 divided by the 40 times 52 and simply run it. What this tells us is that if we have 7,881 patients who need surgery in year 11, considering that each will take half an hour, considering that each surgical suite can only run for 40 hours and 52 week, weeks a year, we're going to need 1.89 surgical suites. Okay, we have two. Perfect. We're good. What about period 12? Well, in period 12, we need two surgical suites dead on, if that forecast is correct. If that forecast is off even a little bit, then we're not going to be able to meet demand. There is a capacity gap that we're going to have to address. Now, what about years 13 and 14? We'll notice our linear trend kept going up. And so what we can see here is that in year 13, we need 2.11 suites. And in year 14, we need 2.22 suites. The question becomes, how much does it cost? How difficult is it uh, to renovate or find space to add that operating table and operating room? 
if this is something that is a very big expense and is very costly, uh, so very costly and very time consuming, disruptive to do this renovation to build additional units, we probably want to forecast even further in the future. And then let's say we look at over the next 10 years what we're going to need, and then we start building to that level. So rather than just four years and saying, okay, well, two surgical suites is not enough, we're going to have to turn people away or find a way to operate more than 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. Well, there's not more than 52 weeks in a year. So we'd have to find a way to operate more than 40 hours a week, add another shift of workers, uh, figure out how to make it uh, more, more quickly do our maintenance or our um, sanitizing uh, than to get by with more. So that's what you start to look at as you're doing capacity planning is, can I get by with my, with my two operating tables currently by adjusting how we operate? Uh, or do I need to start planning for renovations and building extra spaces, in which case maybe I should be looking out even further and I should instead, let's say, for example, let's go back 15, 16, 17, 18. So that's three, six, seven, eight. Now let's go forward 20 years. So let's run this. Let's predict those values. So now we have noticed that as we go out 10 years, we now have 11,968 patients that need surgery. The formula doesn't change if it still takes half an hour per patient and we're still operating at 40 hours a week, 52 weeks a year. But notice as we go out 10 years, we don't exhaust more than 2.88 surgical suites. So for a 10 year plan, based on our forecasting, we could get by with just having three surgical suites. And so as we're planning that renovation, we don't need to build six if it's only 10 years out, if it's much more costly, much more time, time consuming, disruptive to build, then we go out even further, right? And so we wanna make sure we have sufficient capacity for those future needs. And so we check, what do we need based on our forecast? What do we currently have? In this case, two surgical suites, and then start looking at plans to bridge the gap. Is that about changing our current operations so that we can actually have more capacity given our current infrastructure, or do we need to start building some additional capacity?